Welcome to Word Processing Module D Overview, Advanced Tables, Advanced Features, Sorting, Hyperlinks, Word Art, and much, much more. These are the topics that will be included in Module D. So the first thing when you're working with tables, you can actually have the columns put in alphabetic order. So you would, um, you could either select the rows that you wanted to be part of the sorting, or you could just be in the table itself and click from the table tools layout tab, choose sort. And then depending on what column, or if you had a header row, meaning it had title, first name, last name, school, course, that would be header rows, that you would click this and then it would say that. Do you want to sort by first name, last name? Um, this one didn't have a header row, so it was by column one, two, or three. And the default setting is by text, or if it was numbers, you would have it in um, numeric. Um, it's by paragraph, meaning each line, and your choice of ascending order, alphabetic, or descending, Z to A and then you would click OK. So this is an example of before, and it was under column heading resorts, and it put it in alphabetic order. You could split cells, so if you had one particular cell, this would split it into two columns. And the one on the right is splitting it into, keeping it one column, but into two rows. And that is in table, the contextual tabs, table layout, splitting cells. Here's an example of the table alignment assignment on the bottom row. The one singular cell is split into two separate columns. The next one is set into two separate rows, but one column. Here's an example of merging cells. So if you had two separate um, cells, you would hold and drag to select both of them and then you merge them into one. So you can do it within a column and then you can do it across two rows and merge. So here's an example. This was at two separate cells in one column and I joined them and merged together. Then it was two separate cells across two columns and I merged those two together. What's really amazing in Word is you have the capability of calculating just like you would in Excel. You don't have to open up the calculator or, or put the, the amounts in a different place and, and, um, and try and get the totals. You can do it right in Word. So what you would do is at the, at the bottom for the total stay, you would um, click from the table tools layout formula, and notice it's the FX, just like you would if, if you were in Excel. And the, the default is to have it equal sum, but because this one was taking it per night, multiply it by how many nights they're saying, staying, it's multiplication, so the term is product. And it would, to the left of it, it multiplied $159 times seven night, and there's the total. In order to get the dollar sign, the comma, and the decimal two places, you have to select the norm number formatting style to get that. But that simple formula, you would just change the sum to product so that it would multiply. To get a calculation at the bottom, how many totals um, per night, the stays and the total stay, again, you would be in the cell that you want the formula to actually calculate and you would click layout, formula, and again, it would be the default setting. And because you're in the cell of per night, it knows to add above. So it would automatically be equal sum above, so you don't have to change anything in this formula. Just make sure you do the number format so you get the dollar sign, comma, the thousands place, and the decimal two places. This is a great feature if you have um, a table that goes across multiple pages. Because um, you have a header row that would have the column heading, city, uh, state, income, house cost, and so forth. Well, on the left-hand side, it shows you what happens on the page one. It goes to page two, but you don't know what the headings are. On the right-hand side, 
um, it can, finishes off on one page, but automatically on the next page, it repeats the heading. So if this went on to a third page, that very first line would be the heading. And then if you do any editing where you delete a row or add rows, it'll constantly re readjust it so that the city state income header row will always be at the top of every page. To modify the table, because the general layout is just um, just a grid, just a regular style grid. If you click the more options, you can change your style to be um, more appealing to the eye. And once you click the more and there's a scroll bar and you can, again, keep going all the way down and check the different ones. You have plain, grids, and list. And these are the standard default color palette. If you wanted to change it to different colors, you would go into this design. So there's two table tools design. This is based on the table. You would have to go into design and change your color theme palette first, then go back to design into st table styles and you would have a different color theme. You can experiment with, once you choose a, a particular table style, the header row usually means um, it's in bold, the first row, uh, or the first column you want in bold. You can uncheck it and it would take the bold off of the first column. Um, the banded rows, if you, if you have them shaded um, different colors just to different, differentiate between the two columns or rows, you could choose those. But you just um, experiment with them. If you don't like it, just uncheck it, check it back, and, and see what, what you um, style you like best. But the, but the only way to do it is either check it or uncheck it, and it'll go back to whatever way it was. Inserting a cover page, which is pretty simple. It's basically in the Insert tab, and you just select Cover Page. There are, I think, about 15 or 16 different uh, styles to choose from, and they all have um, placeholders where you would type in either uh, a main title, a subtitle, the author, company. You can even put in a particular date. Uh, there's any placeholders that you don't need or don't, do not uh, want on your cover sheet. You would just click the, um, the placeholder title and then just delete it. There are pictures that come with them. You can right click and change the picture to anything you'd like. You can also change the whatever the color of this particular cover sheet is. You can change the fill color to something different. And then also if you ever wanted to remove a current current page, you would just do that same insert and choose cover page and you would just click remove current cover page. Here's a sample uh, that I two samples, the wisp and um, another one on the right hand side. Um, let's see if I can remember what that one was called. No, don't remember. But you can select anything and I changed all the colors of it. And whatever you have, I chose today and it prints it. So it's the year 2022 and it puts the date on the bottom right. Inserting hyperlinks. So you can definitely tell this HTTP colon slash slash, this is a hyperlink um, because it's showing in blue. Sometimes it shows it in underline as well. If you wanted the, to remove the hyperlink, um, you could just right click so that um, it's the same color of the regular text and it doesn't have that underline. The only thing is if you keep it like this, you could actually access this website directly from the Word document. So that's what's nice about having the link within the document. You can also have a link not only on text and a web page, but you can also have it on a graphic. And now when you're typing a URL in a Word document, it'll automatically complete it as a linked website just because you typed the address. So if you wanted to get rid of it, you would just right, right click and remove. So it's nice, it's already doing it automatically for you. What you can also do, even though it you know, creates a hyperlink for you automatically, normally when you hover over it, you get the hand pointing, which means this is a link to a different um, location or a website. If you hold control and click it, it would actually take you to this particular website. Now, this is a screen tip, and the screen tip always has the URL, and then it will say state control click to follow this link. 
but if you wanted to change the screen tip to, to read pool safety uh, instead of the address, you could, you could change that. We'll get into that later on. And this is also, if you hover over this picture, if you create a hyperlink, it'll have that hand pointing and you would control click to get to that link, even on a picture. So you could select the text and just right click and um, choose link, or you can do it from the insert tab in the ribbon and create a link. So the um, hyperlink can be on text, it can be on pictures, you can have it take you to an actual um, website, you can have it take you to an email address, and you can also have it take you, especially if it's a multiple um, page document, you can have it take you to another location in the actual document. So here's the samples. You could uh, have it linked to another web page. You could have it linked to something within the particular document itself or you can have it linked to a new document or to an email address. So this was the sample of the City of Orlando text and the link is um, typed over here. You don't have to type the HTTP colon slash slash. As soon as you type www dot and you start typing it, it'll automatically appear for you. If you didn't want it to have the URL as the screen tip, you would click screen tip and you would type, um, you know, join City of Orlando or welcome City of Orlando and that would be the screen tip instead of the URL address. To edit hyperlinks, if maybe you did type a screen tip and you have a spelling error, you could go into edit and back to screen tip and adjust it. Or you tried the link and it wasn't working, maybe you mistyped the URL address so you would edit and fix it there. So this is where you'd go to screen tip. So you have your text to display is what you, what you selected. It turns to a link. You have the address down here in the URL. And then you click screen tip and you can type exactly what you want it to say. So instead of it saying HTTP colon blah, 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 it would say pool safety tips. So that's something you can create on your own. Quick parts. This is a pretty exciting feature, especially if you work for a particular business or company and you want to create a letterhead, something that you use over and over again on all your documents. You wouldn't want to have to create it all the time or go to somewhere and copy it and then go to another document and paste it. You would set up it as a quick part so it's always available to use. And it can include text, it can include graphics, it can include shading and border, anything you want. Um, and then you just save it as a quick part, and whenever you need it, you would retrieve it that way. And we'll have another assignment just to go over to show you how this works. So these are an example of um, specialized office skills. This is a letterhead. Um, pizza Palace, you know, you created a, um, a letterhead for your Pizza Palace um, business, or the stick uh, letterhead. So you would create them, get them all set up, with the text, the font, the shading, um, any graphic pictures that you had, and then you would select it all, control A, and then you would choose insert quick parts and you'd give it a name. And they would be, this one I called Office Skills, Pizza Palace, and STCC Letterhead. So whatever one I needed at that time, I just click pick quick parts, they, the drop down box, and I pick whatever one I want, and it displays instantly on my blank document. Great feature. Um, this is pretty cool too, working with um, columns and newsletters, but I'm gonna pick up on this particular um, slide in the next video. Thank you.